Hi everyone. In this video I'd like to look at noise gates and expanders. A noise gate is an automated volume control, just like a compressor. But a noise gate doesn't turn down the level when it gets too loud, like a compressor does, but it turns it all the way down to zero when the level is already very soft. So <laughs> why would you want that? Well, basically to clean up the audio. Say you've got some hiss in your recording of a guitar, for example. You probably only hear this hiss when the guitar is not playing. When it is, it masks the hiss. So a noise gate can help there. It turns down the volume all the way down to zero in the parts where the guitar is quiet. So the hiss is gone. To show you how to set it up, I've got this track here. And we're going to look at the instrument group of that track. For the sake of this video, I added some clicks to it. You can only hear the clicks when the instruments are not playing. Again, because they're masked when the instruments are playing. So let's grab our noise gate. It has about the same controls you will find on a compressor. This little triangle over here is the threshold. With that, you determine at which audio level the noise gate should close. So volume to zero. With the attack, you determine how fast the noise gate opens. And with the release, you determine how fast it closes again. To be accurate, this is actually not a noise gate, but an expander. It's basically the same thing, but on an expander you can also set the ratio. So if I use a ratio of 2 to 1, for example, that means if the audio drops 1 dB below the threshold level, it is attenuated with 2 dB. For this tutorial we're going to use it as a noise gate, and then we start by finding the right threshold level. So the gate is open when the instruments play, but it closes when the clicks are heard. So at this threshold level, the instruments get through and the clicks are removed. But as you can hear, it doesn't sound quite good yet. But we can tweak this with the attack and the release time. I'm going to use a little slower attack time, so it opens up a little more slowly. Sometimes even if you use a very fast attack time, you can hear a click when the gate opens, and I don't want that. And as you can hear, the level drops at a certain point over here. And this we can set with the release. We wanted to keep it open a little longer, so I'm going to use a longer release time. Now we're almost there, but as you can see, the release time is quite long, so it takes a lot of time for the gate to slowly close. And in this case, it's too late for the first click, because the gate is not closed yet, so it's still there a little bit. Thankfully, there's also a hold function. This keeps the gate open by the time you set here, and after that, it closes with the setting you've chosen at the release time. So we can use a shorter release time, so the gate closes faster, but we can use a longer hold time, so it stays open for a longer time. Right now, the release time is much faster, but it cuts off a little bit of the music in the end. So I'm going to use a longer release time. And then there's one more function, the range. With this, you determine the maximum attenuation. For example, if I set it to 9.8 dB, that means the sound will be attenuated by a maximum of 9.8 dB, whatever ratio setting you use. So in our case, the clicks have now dropped in level by 9.8 dBs, but you can still hear them. So in the case of clicks or hiss, well, you would use a maximum range. But for example, if you have a voiceover recording with loud breaths, you could also use a noise gate. And then set the range to, I don't know, 7 dB, for example, to turn down the breaths just a little bit. So they're softer now, so not distracting anymore, but they're still there to keep it sound natural. So this noise gate has a sidechain as well, and some other options. Right now we won't focus on those options, because we wanted to focus only on the features you will find on every noise gate and expander. That's it, thanks for watching. For more tutorials go to audiokickstart.com.